Good evening. I'd like to share a recent testimony and normally I am a, a very private person so <laughs> you wouldn't think so because of the hundred videos that I have thus far. I don't even know if I have maybe 200. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, um, <clears throat> one of my neighbors that lives up the road from me noticed my bumper stickers. I have two Jesus bumper stickers on my car. <laughs> one of them, which my ex thought was funny, he read it and he just thought it was, he laughed as it says, do you follow Jesus this closely? <laughs> so yeah, uh, he's Christian. <clears throat> so It's a little hard for me. Uh, so my neighbor invited me to go to his church, which is here in town. And I avoid churches. Uh, I avoided them before I uh, came into Christianity and, um, and even coming into the truth and learning the truth. I avoid them even more. <laughs> Does that make sense? I avoid I avoid avoid it like the plague because when you come into the truth you understand this is Satan system. Most churches, I'm not saying all, but most churches <clears throat> they have witchcraft in them. Uh they celebrate Christmas, which is a satanic ritual there's a scripture i know in the bible that says to not cut down a tree and dress it in silver and gold uh even the word santa you mix up the letters and it's satan <clears throat> and you're teaching your children that it's okay to lie you're lying to your children and it's like you're, and it teaches you to have a good feeling about lying to them which is not cool at all, if you think about it. In any event, this isn't about dissing holidays, even though all of them are satanic. Um, I avoid going to churches because I don't. I I learn from I learn from His Holy Spirit. I'm going to read a few scriptures to you, and then I'll continue. Um, with this video in Galatians um, chapter 1 verses 8 through 12 that's Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 through 12 but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I ver I certify, not verify, excuse me, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. How have I, I mean, I can't explain to you or anyone in words really how I'm guided by his Holy Spirit. It's what the Lord Jesus Christ wants me to know and the situations that he places me in. I go. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what I'm going to say to people. 
I just go where I'm led. So when my neighbor up the street pulled into my driveway over the weekend, last weekend, um, I'm sure, I think it was Saturday, uh, invited me to go to Bible study. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to chuckle about that. But go to Bible study. He said that they do Bible study Monday evenings. And because there are no coincidences with the Lord Jesus Christ, and I... Uh, I was like, I, 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 I'm new to this area. I've only been here for a year. And I was like, yeah, this could be the opportunity to get to know those in my community. So I didn't want to close the door, especially since I was like, I felt like I had to say yes. So I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and even afterwards, I vented to the Lord Jesus Christ because I, I'm an introvert and I, um, I have anxiety when I'm around other people. I just, I, that's my personality and the thought of me walking into a room with other with strangers is terrifying to me uh, among other things so i vented to the lord jesus christ saying i don't want to do this i don't want to do it but because i love you I'm going to do your will and go, even though I had this, I'm going to be honest, preconceived idea that I, I wasn't going to like it because I know there are soft pastors and ministers who, who don't know truth that they don't know, they don't even know the world that they're living in. And they don't teach meat. I mean, when I say meat, I mean telling others that the world is full of lies is truth. Telling others that if you are following a false doctrine, which is worldly doctrines, worldly doctrines it it's it's from satan this is satan's system so anything that's not 100 percent this it's a worldly doctrine so i was i i'm gonna be honest i i had this preconceived idea i was like you know i don't really want to be in a room full of people who think they're going to heaven when the chances are, you know, when you know only a remnant's going to be saved, I don't really know the mathematical odds, you know, and to be put in that situation to know truth, it's so hard to sit there and to witness other people's fruits and know how lost they are. I don't know if anybody else can attest to this and feel the same way as I do, but I find it so hard to be around people when I'm like, I know they're not saved. I know they're going to go through tribulation and it's hard. It's so hard. So I knew I was putting myself in a situation that I was going to have so much anxiety, even though I was okay there, but my my heart was like it was tachycardia it was just speeding up so fast and they had me read some scriptures out loud too which is like that's really hard for me to do to read out loud in front of other people it's one thing for me to read in front of 
my laptop but to read in front of others I don't know why I find that so difficult so because it's like I have it's when I'm reading because I know that I'm full of anxiety I feel like they can hear it in my breath in the rhythm of me reading you know I feel like they they can they can see my my panic and I I don't like bringing attention upon myself I'm a little bit panicky right now thinking about it so I um I went to the Bible study and at first the first five minutes when uh, there was only six people there you know thank you father <laughs> it was still hard it was six people and myself and a little dog um, uh, my neighbor had his little dog with him um, they all claimed to be born again which I was like okay this is this is a good start <laughs> this is a really good start you want to talk about Jesus they're all born again they wanted to know if I went to a previous church which I'm like no <laughs> I told them how I was plucked out of the world in December and I became born again and I've just been you know learning through his holy spirit and they all were like you know praise jesus and all that stuff and i was like we were about to get into prayer everybody was telling their like stories of their week or something and then as i started listening i was like oh man one person was talking about her neighbor and I'm like, because she was asking for prayers from the group because she felt threatened by her neighbor that she was going to call the police on her neighbor because she was living in this, um, what do they call those? Uh, when you have a townhouse or something and you're, you're living in that. I don't I forgot the word she was she used but it's like it's a community where anyways so she said she lived in whatever that town home townhouse or condo society thing and she was having a problem with one of her that she was gonna call the police and so on even though she said I know that um, that it's spiritual and that we're not fighting against flesh and blood so she said that and she said you know no powers formed against me will prosper so she was saying all this stuff so she was she was saying scriptures she was saying the idea of these things but then she said she was going to call the police on her neighbor and there's a there's a lot of things wrong with that because one she's still gonna be your neighbor she's gonna know you're the one that called the police on her and it's like it's adding fuel to the fire it's like if you are a born-again christian and know this is spiritual uh don't take matters into your own hands you know go directly to the lord jesus christ and pray about it and feed your enemy and give them water and whatever so then she said that and then we continued on to the bible study and then i mentioned i don't know how, i don't know why or like i wouldn't have out of nowhere mentioned it but i had said that you know, NASA is uh, an establishment and an institution of lies. There's like no truth there whatsoever. Uh, we never went to the moon. And again, you know, I felt like whatever the Holy Spirit wanted me to say to plant little seeds. I don't stomp on people's gardens. I just plant seeds. And 
one woman across the room started getting angry a little bit. I could, I could, I could feel it almost that she was just so upset uh, that I was, that I just, all I did was give truth, but she was so upset, like, you know, uh, that we, we, that we should only get our truth from the Bible. And I'm like, well, okay. The Bible says there's a firmament. I didn't say this because I didn't continue because I felt her anger. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to go further with what, you know, she was, she was like, we should just stick to the Bible. <laughs> but then as the meeting was going on, she was talking about worldly things. And, you know, I, I know the hypocrisy. I'm a hypocrite on uh everyone's a hypocrite at, at some level but any event oh 15 minutes i'm so sorry come to find out they believed in one saved always saved and even though i said i didn't have because i didn't i didn't prepare for what we were going to discuss i just said that there's 21 scriptures that clearly say you can lose your salvation and uh here's the thing i don't disagree that some people who the thing is i know that there's others who say like once you're truly sealed that's it yes that's truth but I don't know. I'm not saying that I know everything. I'm just saying that when I walked away, they, you know, I was invited back to do Bible study again. And I'm torn because it's like for me, if I go back a week from tonight, I'm going to, I'm going to have two or three pages of stuff to lay out truth whether or not others are willing to accept it or not it's like as a servant of the lord jesus christ it's my responsibility because i can't watch something that i know that if they believe that you know if the the angry the the angry women these well the one that was saying that she was going to call the police on her neighbor didn't seem too angry but it's an aggressive thing to 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 bring authorities in there does that sound like it's the holy spirit to you that is that being wiser than a serpent but gentle as a dove is that being knowledgeable and truly fighting with love and, 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 and what got me is, it seems to me that everybody references scriptures, but they don't apply it in their life. It's like they memorize scriptures, they know the idea, they know the concept, but if you're not applying it in your heart, if it's not written in your heart, what good is it? If it's not, if you're not loving your neighbor as you love yourself it's like yes you know you're supposed to but your actions your fruit you're throwing bad fruit fruit at people and i'm torn because i don't i'm not going to do bible study with this group because they're not even they're not even um they're not even in milk really it's like okay they know jesus christ but it just i mean i'm not generalizing the whole group i'm just saying that it just it seems like it's milk and the woman that was teaching it said a handful of times that you know we're not a we're not a, a church that that teaches anything but the meat and it's like woman you don't even know you don't even 
no, the stuff that she was showing was media articles and the stuff she was showing, I'm like, you don't even know that what you're showing is a bunch of lies. You're bringing people attention that the, the articles she was showing was lies. My light just blinked a little. <laughs> that a lot of the articles that have numbers and colors um, just like those shootings, the school shootings, they put specific numbers in there to communicate with one another and it's ceremonial and it's witchcraft. That's what it is. Predictive programming, witchcraft, ceremonial numbers. It's, it's a bunch of things, but what the article is about. And she, she had no idea. She's just spiritually blind and I don't, I'm not trying to say that to be rude by any means whatsoever, but when I, I plan on going back on Monday, but I'm going to just take the time because I care to write down some things that, you know, I know that I can't call myself a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ if I'm and, and say that I care about people so much and just say words but do nothing. I can't sit down and say I'll just pray for them and not go back to that Bible study. I don't plan on going there to, to take information. I plan on going there to give information and again I'm, I'm not trying to be boastful or any of that stuff. I just want to give truth to the best of my ability to plant seeds. I don't, and it's, it's hard for me too, because it's like, I have to be gentle. I can't, I don't want them to think I'm trying to break up their group. I'm not, I don't, I, you know, I don't want them to think that you know, I'm evil that I'm trying to, because they believe that they're part of the body of Christ. And I, I, I'm not saying one way or another, but if you don't know truth and you don't know what scriptures mean and you're not applying them in your life, you at least, if you had his Holy Spirit, should feel chastised right now. I'm just sharing this testimony because wherever you feel led, when you're, when you're brought into a situation and certain people cross your paths, don't say no necessarily because the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, it doesn't matter even if there's something that does not resonate with the Holy Spirit. It's, you don't know why uh, that event is happening. It's because he wants you to help somebody else. He wants you to plant a seed. He wants you, maybe you personally, to learn something from that situation. There are no coincidences. So even though, excuse me, I didn't want to go, I was called to. Do I think... And there, it was an older group of people. There was nobody under 50 there. Do I think any of them, they know that I've only been born again since December 7th for nine months. Do I think any of them are going to really truly take me seriously and listen to me? No, but also I feel led to do it. Because if they truly have his Holy Spirit, they'll be able to humble themselves. Humble themselves. And, and be accepting to at least hear me out. And I'm absolutely terrified. I know the Lord... The Lord God's going to give me strength to do this, but it's like, I feel 
Like I can't tell Jesus Christ that I care so much for other people and just not accept this challenge, I guess. Because again, even if they not they may not listen to me, I'm speaking from the heart and giving truth to the best of my ability. But what worries me is if they reject me, they won't have any excuse. They won't have any excuse because I gave them truth. They don't have anything to fall back on. And I know there's a scripture in the Bible that says it's better for somebody to not be a believer and 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 be unaware something i i'm i don't i'm not talking verbatim or anything but i know there's something in the bible that says it's better for somebody to be to to not claim that they believe anything than it is for somebody to claim that they're a follower of the lord jesus christ and isn't they're not willing to to humble themselves i i I feel like I'm responsible and I have to do this, but it's just, if they don't accept it, I'm going to lose sleep over that because I care about all six of those people, even though things are going to think, you know, it's going to happen the way it's supposed to happen. And I ha I'm still having a hard time accepting that. That regardless of whatever I do, whatever effort I do, it's going to, he already has the chess pieces and it's already been moved. He knows the beginning and the end. So, and the thing is, I don't care about rewards. That's what gets me is I'm not doing this. My reward is another person saved. That's my reward. So again, I'm just sharing this testimony because don't sit down in your walk that even if something seems like it's out of your comfort zone, if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, you don't want to have regrets and, and say no when you don't know, like to be in that situation, if whatever you say planting a seed could save another so um i hope everyone has a good night and god bless